As I begin today's lesson on interference of sound waves, uh, let me just remind you that you can always go back and watch this video later on my YouTube channel. And of course, feel free to, to pause it. You should pause it if I'm going too fast in the video and, and jot down some notes. In fact, you should be taking notes on th throughout this lesson on the things that I'm talking about. Now, yesterday we talked a lot about resonance, and we dealt specifically with the resonance of strings, stringed instruments like violins and guitars and so on. We talked about fundamental frequencies and second harmonics and so on. And on Monday we're going to go back to that idea of resonance. Then we'll do the resonance of tubes and air columns in those tubes. Things like trumpets and flutes and pipe organs. And we'll, we'll look at the physics behind that kind of resonance. But for today, I want to teach you what happens when we have interference from two different sound sources. If you have two sources of waves, what happens when those two waves collide with each other? You saw this a little bit the other day with the slinkies. We had waves going down on the same side of the slinky and waves going down on opposite sides of the slinky. And we saw that we had constructive interference sometimes and destructive interference sometimes. And hopefully in your mind right now you can picture what constructive interference and destructive interference look like for the slinky. Well the same thing happens with all kinds of waves, whether it's water waves or sound waves or light waves. And uh, today I'm going to just take a look at what happens with interference of sound waves. So you can imagine if I've got two sources of sound waves, I'm going to have sometimes when they collide I'll have a compression line up with a compression and it's going to make a really compressed compression. And if I have a a rarefaction line up with a compression. Those two things are going to collide and kind of cancel each other out to make a, well, no wave at all. It's going to be a zero amplitude wave at that point. Well, when I have these two things destructively interfering, when I have sound waves from a compression and a rarefaction come together, that's destructive interference. And from a compression and a compression, when they come together, that's constructive interference. And then also a rarefaction colliding with a rarefaction. That's still constructive interference. In each case, I'm going to have, well, you tell me. If I have a compression lining up with a compression for sound waves, what would that sound like with a one big compression? How would that sound? I, I can't hear you. Louder? Yes, that's correct. Louder is the answer. If I have constructive interference for sound waves, I end up with a louder sound. And destructive interference for sound waves, I end up with a quiet spot, or a quiet sound, maybe even nothing at all if it's perfectly destructive interference. To really understand what I'm talking about, I'm going to have you watch and really listen to a demonstration right now. So now that you've heard that, I hope that as you moved your head from side to side, you, you heard the quiet spots and you heard the loud spots. It is because there was interference happening within the room. We had compressions lining up with compressions, and rarefactions lining up with rarefactions, and, and sometimes compressions lining up with rarefactions themselves. And we had destructive interference in those spots. Or remember, destructive interference was the quiet spots that you heard. Well, that's hard to see because obviously it's sound waves. So I've got a simulation on a computer here that helps us see that. So what you're looking at right here is the simulation. I, I'm going to have two sources of waves over here. This would work for water waves and sound waves and light waves too for that matter, but we'll just focus on the sound waves. Well, if I start the waves here, you'll see that these waves, these sources of sound, are giving off sound waves. So I've got compressions and refractions coming out, and I've got crests and troughs, if you want to think of it in terms of water waves. And, and it might be that the black spots here, that's a compression or a crest. And, and the, uh, the other, the blue spots, the brighter spots, those are rarefactions or maybe troughs. And the waves are going out. And you can see when we do that, we set up this wave pattern. Let me pause it to look at it. I set up a wave pattern that looks something like this, where you can see out in this area, I've got a big wave. I've got compressions and rarefactions happening out here. I've got large amplitudes. So this is a loud spot. And yet here, I've got no wave at all. The compressions and the rarefactions cancel each other out. It's like the crest and the trough lining up and canceling each other out. With destructive interference, 
I end up with a quiet spot right here. And then another loud spot, and then a quiet spot. So if you were sitting along this spot, you were sitting here, you heard a loud spot. You move your head, you hear a quiet spot. You move your head here, you hear a quiet spot. If you're sitting back here, you might have to move your head more, but you can still hear those quiet spots and those loud spots. This simulation actually has a 3D component to it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can see this. I've got a whole bunch of uh, big amplitude waves right here. So that's the way you're allowed spot. This is no amplitude waves. So it's quiet right there. And so on. Well, as with anything or many things in physics, there's got to be an equation. So we're going to figure out that equation today. What I'd like to do to figure out that equation is look at some different variables. We're going to start off by looking at the variable that we're going to call x. And by x, I mean the distance between loud spots as you hear them. So uh, I, I have a loud spot. You can almost see it here. Anyone who's sitting along here, here's a loud spot. And anyone whose ears are here, that's a loud spot. And there's another loud spot. And then I've got them down here too. With that then, I want to look at the distance between loud spots. So I'm going to call this distance x. And you can see the x would be different here and different out here. Or if I was going from this loud spot all the way out to this loud spot, I'd have a bigger x. And the first thing I want us to look at is what happens when I change the wavelength of the sound sources. So. Here's the pattern as it stands right now. I'm going to increase the wavelength. I want you to watch what happens to x. Okay, it takes a second for the pattern to set up here. Again, the wavelength now is bigger than before. How does x change? x is the distance between the loud spots. Well, you can see here, I, I've got a loud spot kind of in this general vicinity out here. And then I've got a quiet spot and then another loud spot way over here. And I've got a quiet spot down here. Hopefully you can see that as the wavelength went up, the distance between the loud spots went up. Before it was from here to here. But now it's from here, I have to go from this loud spot all the way up to here to this loud spot. My x increased. And I know what you're already thinking. You're thinking, well, that, I can write that relationship. You're right. That means there's a direct relationship. X is proportional to the wavelength. And you can see that right here in the simulation. Now, I'm going to try to go back to the previous one. We'll see if I can do that. So I'm going back to somewhat close to my my first situation where uh, the loud spots were about this far apart. Maybe I need to redraw this a little. So there's one loud spot along that line. Here's another spot or a line of loud spots. Here's another line of loud spots and another one up here. Well, and that of course makes my X here change. Now, it depends not only on the wavelength, but also depends on what loud spot you're talking about. So, am I looking at this loud spot, or this loud spot, or this loud spot? We have these, we have different integers for these. So, we call this the n equals zero line of loud spots. This is the n equals one line, and this is the n equals two line. Down below, it's n equals one again. And here's another one, this is n equals 2. Whoops. That's n equals 1, not n equals 2. Okay, so it can be a little confusing because I know you're thinking, well, shouldn't we have positives and negatives? And the answer is no. We're just talking about, am I at the first loud line or the second loud line? And it's the same if it comes down below the zero loud line. Well, as you can imagine, you can see it right here yourself. If I go from n equals 0 to n equals 1, or I go n equals 0 to n equals 2, that x is much bigger. 
Those are both x's. And you can see, as n increases, so does the x. So again, that is a direct relationship. As I look at a different line of loud spots, the distance between them changes in a direct relationship. Now, in our class, n is almost always going to be 1. That's just going to be the way that it works. Unless I say something like, you're going between the n equals 0 loud spot to the n equals 2 loud spot. So 9 times out of 10, it's going to be the n equals 1 loud spot. Now, you can also imagine, you can see yourself, that the distance between the loud spots depends on how far away you are from the sources. So we can look at that, too. And I can do that by just telling you another variable. We're going to call L the distance from the sources to your detection point. So again, L is the distance from the sources to the detection point. In this case, it's sources of sound, and your detector is your ear. And we can see, once again, look at as I go farther away, as L increases, so does X. When L is small, that small distance, then X is small. And when L is big, then X is big. So as one increases, so does the other. That tells me that X must also be proportional to L, the distance from the sources to the detection point. Now, I want to do one more. There's one more variable left. And you can probably imagine, well, couldn't I change the distance between those two things? And would that change things here? So let me try that. Just to clean this board up a little bit so you can see what's happening. I'll erase it and then redraw those exact same loud spots. So here's my line of loud spots. That's n equals 0. Here's n equals 1. Here's n equals 2. This is also n equals 1, and then this is n equals 2 down here. Now I'm going to move these spots farther apart, and I want you to watch what happens. Okay, so I'm increasing this distance. And, and by the way, let's call that, that's D. D is the distance between the sources. Again, D is the distance between the sources. So I'm going to increase that, and I want you to watch what happens. As I increase D, what happens to X? Do these lines get closer together or farther apart? Let's find out. It takes a second for the wave pattern to show up again. And hopefully you can see that the X is actually decreased. Right before, the distance between loud spots was this far. But now the distance, it, well, I almost have three in that one, in that same exact area. So the x has gone closer together. So that tells me that x is indirectly related to d. That is, the, the farther apart the sources are, the closer together the loud spots are out here. Now I want to combine all of that of course, so I'm going to combine it like this. I'm going to say x is proportional to lambda n and l all over d. And not only is it proportional, it turns out that it's equal. So I'll go up here for that. x is equal to lambda n l over d. And finally, I'm going to rearrange this just to make it into the more traditional view of the equation. It should look like this. Lambda equals dx over nl. And that is the equation that I will give to you on quizzes and tests. That's the equation you need to carry forward from here. That is the equation for how 
sound waves interfere, actually all waves, water waves, sound waves, light waves, they all interfere with this exact same equation. That's how lambda and d and x and n and l are all related to each other. And using that equation, you'll be able to do your home learning for this weekend. And it is due on Monday.